Hello and welcome back to another episode of An Injustice for All MMA. My name is David. And this episode is for UFC Fight Night, Roy Val versus Tyra. Um, I just finished the card. I'm finally caught up. At the moment of this recording, uh, it's there are I think they're halfway through with the Hernandez versus uh, Michelle Pereira fight. Let's go through this fight, okay? First of all, this was a really good fight night. A really, really exceptional fight night. I have no problems with the commentary. I'm very chill. I'm very lax. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. But there's just a couple problems. One problem being really inconsistent scorecards. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking... That's the whole point of this show, is a show, podcast, whatever whatever the fuck this is. That's the whole point of this, is just inconsistent scorecards. I don't think there'll ever be an episode where I don't complain about the scorecards. I'm still, till this day, waiting for an immaculate scorecard. A perfect scorecard where either the judges don't get to judge, or... Everyone is just on the same page. It's a 30-27 the whole way. It's a 29-28 the whole way. Whatever the scoring comes down to, that all the fights end in a unanimous scorecard. And it's times where I think that there's no way that'll ever happen. Because if I'm just going to be very honest with you, this might have been the most... And I'm just looking through it really quickly. This might have been the clearest... This might have been the cleanest card that I've ever scored, honestly, that should yield no arguments and that every judge should have been on the same page. Every single judge should have been on the same page. I can't find a round in here that you could argue is close, that you could argue for either person at all. And yet, we get to this scorecard, and for some reason, there's always one person that seems to fuck it up. And that person is Saul Diamata, for the majority of this fight card. Let's start with the first one. First honorable mention, it's Polistri versus McKenna. This fight ends in a split decision. Um, I had this 30-27 for Polistri. 30-27 for Polistri. I just gave a 29-28. We'll get to that in a second. But in the first round, in the first round, Polistri outstruck McKenna by about 13 strikes. In the second round, Polistri outstruck her by 15 strikes. And then in the third round, um, uh, what was it? Polistri outstruck McKenna on the feet by about 12 plus strikes. McKenna had a takedown with some grind and bound for about a minute. Uh, but that ground and pound was irrelevant because... Polistri was so active on her back that McKenna was getting tagged while she was on top of her. So, essentially, what happened on the ground is kind of irrelevant. There are portions of the stand-up in this round, not in this round, uh, in this fight, where um, Polistri is out Polistri is outstriking McKenna clear, but McKenna's throwing back, and... While it looks as though some of it's landing, the majority of it isn't landing. So maybe some judges were just looking at that and were deciding, hey, it's kind of close on the feet. If you polled 50 judges, Polistri's the winner of this fight. Better yet, I had a 30-27. Guess what? The judges vehemently disagree. We go to the judges' scorecards. Um... Where Adelaide Bird has the first two rounds for Polistri, and then gives the last round to McKenna. I just explained the third round. It, it honestly, it really makes no sense. That last round should have gone to uh, to Polistri. Honorable mention Adelaide Bird. That's you know that's whatever. Um, Saul Diamata, his scorecard is just also very bad. He was the first round to Polistri. He was the second round to to McKenna. He gives the third round to um, to McKenna as well. Him giving the second round to McKenna is is very bad. It's just really, really fucking bad. She gets outstruck clear. I mean, she gets outstruck worse than she got outstruck in the first round, and yet he gives her the second round. Super honorable. It's just bad. It's a really bad scorecard. And then Ron McCarthy gives uh, all three judges, well, excuse me, gives all three rounds to Blistery. That's the correct scorecard. Simple as that. That is the correct scorecard. We go to the next honorable mention. 
go to the next honorable mention, and it's Rodriguez versus Morono. I thought I thought they were going to get it because I'll explain in a second. Hold on. 29-28 to Rodriguez. Last two rounds you give to Rodriguez. This fight ended up being a split decision. Also, also very confusing. Um, first round for Moreno, last two rounds to Rodriguez. I said that. You go to the first round. And in the first round, Moreno, Morono outstruck uh, Rodriguez by about four strikes. I know the strike numbers are low, but he outstruck him enough and, and well throughout the round to know that this was his round. You go to the second round, and in my view... The second round is the closest round, and the reason I say that is because, I'll read the description, Rodriguez outstruck Morono by about eight to nine strikes. Here's the thing, though. There are certain exchanges where it looks as though they're both kind of landing, and so let's say you kind of took your eye off of this fight for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds. You could come away with the view that Morono somehow won this round. Now, I don't think he did. Obviously, I watched the whole thing. He didn't. He was outstruck pretty well in this round. This round goes to Rodriguez. But I could see, in my head, I could see someone fumbling this round towards Morono. But still, regardless, Morono lost this round. Um, you go to the third round where uh, Rodriguez outstruck Morono by about 20 strikes, and he had to take down. This round is Rodriguez's. You go to the judge's scorecards, and somebody fumbled it because it was a split decision. Mike Bell, uh, his scorecard reflects mine, 29-28 for Rodriguez. Uh, Adelaide Bird, same thing. And then Saul Diamato, the I just mentioned it, 29-28. He gives the first two rounds to um, Alex Morono. Honorable mention of Saul Diamato. Bad night for Saul Diego. Really bad. You go to the next honorable mention. Go to the next honorable mention. And it's Tavares versus Park. I I love uh, Park. Amazing fighter. Really nice fighter. This ended in a split decision. Again. Another split decision. Um, I had this 29-28 uh, for Park. First round for Tavares. Last two rounds for Park. Um... You go to the first round here. You go to the first round. Uh, Park was out striking Tavares throughout the throughout the fight. He outstruck him by about three strikes, um, but he was dropped pretty early in the fight, and that round will go to Tavares automatically, really. And then you go to the second round where Park was out striking Tavares by about thirty eight strikes. He outstruck him heavy, heavy in this round. You go to the third round where it was basically now. Uh, uh, how do I how do I say this? The third round was dead, and if this were in Utah, they would have stood him up. But <laughs> that's beyond the point. Um, uh, Park uh, had a takedown. Park had a takedown with about two minutes of ground and pound. Very little happened on the feet. I mean, uh, Tavares was slightly outstriking him on the feet up until the takedown. And then, essentially, Park just had him on the ground, landed enough ground and pound, and stayed on top of him to get the victory. So, there you have it on that. This ended up being a split decision. I'm, I'm, uh, before we even get to the scorecards, I haven't even looked at them yet. The third round should not even go to Tavares. So, I, I'm a little lost. Because this is the only round I could see a judge giving to Tavares. But this round doesn't go to Tavares based off the fact that barely anything happened on the feet. And when it got to the ground, everything was parked. So this is like an all-time bad split decision, really. You go to the judge's scorecards. And I'm going to find it here. It, I'm, I'm correct. Uh, Mike Bell, he has a 29-28. He gives the last two rounds to park. That's correct. Um, if I can find my scorecards here, I'm just looking into the wind. Okay, here we go. And then uh, Eric Colon, his scorecard reflects mine the same way. And then Junichiro Kamijo, just an all-time, it's a, just an all-time bad scorecard. He gives the last round to Park. This is really gross. He gives the last round to Park. He gives the second round to Tavares. Tavares was getting outstruck so bad in this round. Towards the end, he was kind of landing some strikes, but that doesn't mean anything given he was outstruck by about 30 plus strikes honorable mention the junior Camillo is just fucking t it's terrible it's bad it's really really bad and then we go to we go to the main event an amazing fight an amazing fight Roy Val versus Tyra this fight is basically Tyra 
has like a DDP DDP. He has a Duplessis like uh, second wind where he can just keep getting hit and then come back. His grappling is amazing. Absolutely incredible. Um, he showed a lot more ground and pound in this fight than he normally does when he's on top of somebody. But the theme of this fight is basically Rival just outstriking him clear on the feet and then in the 10th round refusing to, to be taken down and having better cardio and having just just honestly better stri better striking than Tyra. Tyra's striking is the whole point of his striking is to get somebody down. He has wrestler striking and while some of his strikes are okay, he can't strike. He really can't strike. He's no threat on the feet and that deterred him from winning this fight overall. That's really the theme of this fight. But we get to the scorecards, and here's where it becomes, again, so far, everything that I've mentioned, these rounds, there's no close rounds. There's nothing that you can argue here. And in the commentary, Brendan Fitzgerald, who I don't like his commentary, Brendan Fitzgerald mentioned, it all comes down to the third round. And I thought about it when he said it. I was like, yeah, okay. I can see, given how the judging has been going, yes, that is the air quote, closest round it is the closest round to give either way obviously i didn't i disagree with that there's an obvious obvious winner of that round i had it 48 47 for roy Bell in the first the third and the fifth round clear there's no argument here it, it's one three and five for roy Bell. he said you can argue the third round and i'll read the description and that'll show why maybe a judge could give it that way you go to the first round Tyra had a takedown, um, but he did nothing with the takedown. He got outstruck by 13-plus strikes in this round by Roy Val. You give that first round to Roy Val. Second round, Tyra had a takedown early with ground. A constant ground and pound. Just good ground and pound by Tyra in this third round. It had a takedown with ground and pound for three-plus minutes. You go to the third round. And here's what, here's the mindset that Fitzgerald was in. Roy Val had a takedown um, with some ground and pound. And he outstruck Tyra on the feet. He outstruck him by about 30 plus strikes. He was he, he was outstriking him so bad, I thought, I really thought Tyra was going to wilt. Instead, he just all of a sudden blows up, gets a reversal from the takedown that, um, that Roy Val had. And uh, he has a submission attempt of his own. He doesn't really do much ground and pound. It. Really, he has little to no ground and pound in this round. And he kind of just saves himself from... What was looking to be a 10A. It was looking to be a 10A. He saves himself really there. Uh, but that round still goes to Roy, goes to Roy Val. He goes to the fourth round. Tyra has a takedown with ground about for two plus minutes. He replicates what he did in the second round, where he just gets a takedown, a takedown immediately, almost essentially almost immediately. And has heavy ground about. Then we go to the fifth round, where both both fighters have a takedown. Both of them have a reversal, but in these transitions, it's basically Roy Vell just outstriking Tyra again by 30 plus strikes. Tyra really doesn't have an answer. Uh, towards the end, Roy Vell has a, it's either a takedown or a reversal, I can't remember, and he lands a, a decent amount of ground and pound on Tyra. It's a 28, excuse me, it's a 48 47 Roy Vell. There's no argument here. And yet, Joel Martinez, uh, Joe Martinez or Joel, I can't remember. He says, he starts saying the names of the judges, and I'm thinking to myself, how in the fuck is there a split decision? No way that should there even be. He should just say unanimous decision. And for some reason, we go to the scorecards. Ron McCarthy, Chris Lee, their scorecards reflect mine. 48-47, they scored it the same way I did for Roy Val. And then Saul Diamante has it, 48-47. All the rounds are the same as mine, except for the very first round. He gives the very first round to Tyra. And I'm thinking to myself, was he watching the fight? Tyra is outstruck by 13-plus strikes in this round. He's outstruck clear. Tyra gets a takedown, and that's it. 
everyone knows how to score this round. This round should have gone to Roy Val. It doesn't. And there you have it. And there you have it. It's 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 an all it's an all time stinker from Saul Diamato. Just really bad. Honorable mention all the way. Just terrible. Just he's the star of the show this night. It should have been Roy Val who had an amazing who who had a fun fight performance with Tyra, and it ends up being Saul Diamato wanting to be different or just scoring it totally wrong. That's it. That's really the end of it. Um, thank you all for listening. And God bless.